Screws will never replace nails in construction. They each have their strong suits and weak suits. A nail goes in, particularly with pneumatic fastening equipment, instantly, and is frankly, in many ways, more structural than a screw. A screw goes in quickly now and is in many ways more structural than a nail. A screw, particularly drywall screws, but screws generally, are carbon steel, medium to high carbon steel, and are harder than nails. By their fundamental nature, a screw has a really high resistance to draw out. That means you just can't pull it straight back out. A nail, on the other hand, particularly as the wood shrinks, has less and less resistance to draw out. Think of a nail in an overhead condition with gravity relentlessly pulling down. The connection is going to become less and less reliable over time. That's one of the reasons a nail has to be longer than a screw to get the same sort of function. But on the other hand, a nail has really good shear strength because it's not a hardened steel. It's mild or just past mild, and so it can be bent and resist side loading without snapping off. Anybody who's ever tried to use a drywall screw in a structure ap structural application and has felt that little click just as it come tight, comes tight, which is what happens when it breaks off just below the head, knows that a screw is a hard and brittle thing. So don't trust it for shear strength. So one of the things that people don't understand is that in the 21st century, almost nobody can hammer. Now I know that you pros can, but a homeowner is often shocked to find out that it's hard to hammer safely and accurately. So this is one of the counterintuitive advantages of a screw. You can always put it where you want it. You can always put it in. So in the 40 years, nearly 40 years that have gone by since I started into the trades, screws have gone from an incidental way to fasten hardware to wood to just an incredible variety of different applications and purposes and finishes. These represent the screws that I use day in and day out. The first thing I want to talk about is the biggest innovation I've come across in the last two or three years, and that's GRK. Just for the record, these guys don't know I exist. They're not paying me. I'm just a fan. I'm telling you, if you're going to buy a structural screw, brace yourself. They're expensive. I can't describe how great they are. They never break. They never strip. You can use them over and over and over. If you've got to use them in form work or something, hang on to them. They're too expensive to throw away, and they're too tough to break. GRK makes a wonderful structural screw. They are exterior rated. They resist the caustic and corrosive chemicals that are used in pressure treated lumber. You get down into this size, I use these sometimes for false work and form work that needs to be able to be stripped easily, no muss, no fuss. Here's some GRK trim head screws. They make the full range of product. They're the way to go. But if cost is a driver, like on drywall screws, you can't use GRK on drywall screws. Drywall screws are awesome. Just because there's one on the bottom of every toolbox or in your drill box, don't get in the habit of using them every place. They have some real limitations primarily around their hardness, they're super hard and super brittle and not structural, and secondarily around the fact that they will corrode almost overnight. Use them outside, you're going to get rust streaks. Um, they don't resist a pressure treated board for a week. As the yellow grabbers or grippers are the same way. They're essentially exactly the same screw, just with some sort of an um, electro-coated yellow finish. I don't want to call them brass. I don't know what they use to make that yellow color but they rust just as fast. They're just as handy and just as limited. These screws are part of a family of screws which is a recent innovation and that is Tapcon. Now that's a brand name, but the idea is if you drill the right size pilot hole into concrete or CMU block, you then can run this in with a drill driver and thread it directly into the concrete substrate and screw anything you want to a concrete surface. That is so handy. Now they're hard. They're necessarily hard because they have to thread into stone, so you've got to be careful on the feed and a drill driver will break them off. Just be cautious and you can screw directly to concrete. I have here an assortment of deck screws, exterior deck screws. They've come a long ways. I screwed down a lot of decks with a electroplated galvanized Robertson square drive head deck screw. I worry about them now. They're not that corrosion resistant. But these are pretty corrosion resistant and they've got some cool features. Number one, the threads are a nice pitch. They pull themselves right into a wooden substrate. Lots of resistance to draw out. Number two, it's got that little cut. Turns the end of the screw into a drill bit 
it tends to drill its way in and keep from splitting the, end, the wood, particularly out towards the end of a cedar board. It's got these little ridges around the head which tend to sort of mill out the countersink for the head as the head flushes with, this, with the decking. Look at that Torx drive opening. Six points, really deep, really positive, fits beautifully. This will never be surpassed as a way to attach a power source to a screw. Forget about the square drive, forget about Phillips, forget about straight slot, this is the way to go. Okay, these four screws are an example of a ceramic coating on an exterior grade screw. I think short of stainless steel, that's probably about as corrosion resistant as you're likely to get. The problem, of course, is it's Phillips drive. I rather suspect this is nothing but a drywall screw with a ceramic coating. I don't trust them. Now, if it was in a very gentle application, not holding much, maybe so. This is the only example I have anymore of a Robertson drive screw, square drive. They were an improvement when it first happened over Phillips, but since Torx showed up, I just assiduously avoid ever paying any money for a screw with a head like that. In exactly the same way that this is a drill bit, technically that is a drill, but let's just call it a drill bit, the ends of these two screws have drill bits integral with the screw itself. It makes them a self-tapper, so it drills a hole through steel, in this case pretty thick steel. I use this for attaching decking to trailers and that sort of thing. These little wings break off after reaming the hole, and then the threads will tap their own way into the steel and provide a threaded opening to suck the decking down into. So the thing that you need to know is there are different size screw tips. Whether you're talking Phillips, Robertson, Torx, there are different size. They have their different numbering regimes. The only way to do, learn it is to learn it. But you've got to become familiar with it. There's nothing worse than climbing a ladder with a particular screw tip in your driver and a screw in your pocket and you pull it out and they don't fit. But I recommend you buy a kit you hang on to it as long as you can. When you lose them, go buy another one. In order to use screws, you gotta be able to carry them and get at them. I love my parachute bag. Okay, this is a little hard to find. I'm hoping you can find it on Amazon. I don't know, I'll check that out for you. The thing about a parachute bag is it'll, take, it'll keep six different kinds of screws separate and it's never gonna spill. Boom. I'm gonna take a chance here, but if it spills upside down, okay, it opens up, I'm at it, okay. I highly recommend these. They'll drop into a five gallon bucket. If you don't want them in a bucket, you just pick it up and go. As you can see, I tore that up a little bit, but I love it too much to, to jump out of it. So I graduated from high school in 1976, gave up on the idea of being a professional musician in 1977, and went to work as a carpenter coming out of the woods and logging in 1978. In 1978, screws had not burst onto the construction scene like they have now that was just about to happen. We thought of screws as things that held latches to cabinet doors, hinges to door jams, landed electrical wires in um, breaker panels, and very rarely were used to attach wooden pieces. We used Yankee screwdrivers for putting screws in. This makes me love a cordless drill driver. But in any case, screws are now something that the construction industry absolutely depends on and that has greatly increased productivity for carpenters generally.